This is one history like Washington and Jefferson and Lincoln are memorialized in stone. You are the governed and the government. This is your city, and the National Zoological Park is your zoo. Part of the Smithsonian Institution, which carries on much of the scientific work of the government, the zoo is the living part of that scientific work, where fellow deer from the Mediterranean can be seen and enjoyed by you, their landlords. Barbary sheep from North African mountains feel at home here in a zoo that has one of the finest and largest collections of animals of any zoo in the world. Thousands of species of mammals, birds, and reptiles from many different places and climates. Gibbons, smallest and by far the most agile and graceful of the four great apes, are from Malaya. Like all the creatures here, they're provided with conditions suitable for their comfort and happiness. For these frolicsome fellows, a jungle gym is the happiest place in the world. The bear seems to say, Howdy, citizen. Welcome to your zoo. You like to look at me? So be my guest. I like to look at you, too. I guess that makes it even all around. So look all around while you're here. There's plenty to see. There are baby elephants, gift of the government of India to your government. The little pachyderms have a lot of growing up to do. And like all youngsters, rather enjoy having a bath. Only no water, please. A trunk full of nice, scratchy, dusty dirt sprayed on an elephant's back is soothing and cooling and does wonders keeping the flies away. A bath substitute which he'll never forget, as if he ever forgot anything anyway. A Siberian crane brought to the zoo over 50 years ago is still stepping high, wide, and handsome. He picks them up and puts them down. Humboldt penguins from Peru aren't exactly birds of feather, but they flock together amicably with feathered friends from all over the world, sharing with ducks and swans the same pond of the zoo. A penguin may not know which end of the swan is up, but the big white bird knows. When a swan eats, the bottom is on top. There are fancy birds and lovebirds, birds with gay plumes and gay voices, birds from Tanganyika and birds from Australia. From the continent down under come these cockatoos, proud as peacocks in their new spring bonnets. Step lively, folks, there's much more to see. Come see me, says the taper from South America. I can wriggle my nose like nobody's business, which is where nobody should have his nose, not even old funny face here. Funny faces, strange faces, and strange bills, too. This one is for the birds, shoe bills from Africa. Funny faces, cute faces, baby faces. Here's a most happy fella, a baby gorilla, also a rare specimen in any zoo. He's priceless, which to him has nothing to do with money. His priceless ingredient is a sunny disposition. So it follows the two can have twice as much fun. And it makes a rhinoceros obstreperous when other folks are having fun and enjoying life and leaving him out of the picture. There, you are in the picture, Riney, old boy. Instead of being just hopping mad, why don't you just hop for joy instead? Don't be jealous. Hop to it. Feeding is a problem in your zoo as it is in your house. The animals and birds lived on many kinds of food in their native habitats. Grass, fruit, meat, fish, bugs, and so forth. They must either be provided with the same diets or adequate substitutes. In the case of the ostrich, this latter is lettuce. Never mind the French dressing or your fancy salad bowl. He won't swallow any of that fancy stuff. Just lettuce and don't count the calories. Lettuce fills the bill for Mr. and Mrs. Hippopotamus, too. Mixed with grain in a kind of coleslaw, it hits the spot. There's a lot of mouths to feed. How would you like to have to feed them every day? There are no dentist bills, however. A mouthwash takes care of that problem. A 
A penguin never heard of lettuce, and if he had, he'd promptly forget it. There's only one word on the tip of his tongue at lunchtime, fish. Fish for breakfast, lunch, and dinner hits the spot for the amphibious birds from Antarctica. And every meal is a dress-up affair. Penguins are fancy dressers, even though their table manners might upset anyone else but another penguin. Smokey says, where's mine? Smokey's a very famous fella. Saved from a forest fire when a cub, he symbolizes our nationwide campaign of fire prevention and wildlife conservation. Here are some of the most famous bears in the world. Born at the zoo, they are hybrids, a cross between a polar bear and Alaskan brown bears, the first known occurrence of such a biological oddity. Their size, their alertness, their taking ways, all combined to make them great favorites with visitors. What beggars they are. Charming beggars, just old smoothies in fur coats. Peanuts are favorite snacks with most zoo denizens, but none comes better equipped to help himself than an elephant. He's got the original boarding house reach. A paw is not as effective as a trunk, but although the fence outsmarts this rascal at first, it won't outfox him for long. The old adage, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, applies to all God's creatures. The greater the effort, the greater the reward. Tastes delicious. Prairie dogs from our western states have a problem many of you have had to face. What to do with unwelcome guests who won't leave? It's a dog's life, even a prairie dog. When a pigeon crashes the party, you'd think checked, but he's just too darn polite. Or does he like pigeons? Well, it's a strange friendship, but then your zoo is full of strange and wonderful things. Come back again someday. <laughs>